And we're live. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's your man, James, Mr. Sequenter Treasures, uh, back again here with another live stream for you, one of our uh, discussion live streams known as Sequential Thinking. Uh, I'm glad you could join me today. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, hope uh, you're having a nice time, uh, you know, with uh, things finally opening back up. You know, everyone not being in lockdown so much anymore. And hope, uh, yeah. so, you know, hopefully you can enjoy the the outside you know, it's warmed up around uh, here, around where I'm at. So uh, I'm really enjoying, uh, really enjoying getting outside a little more. Hope you are too. Um, today's topic is I'm going to be discussing the recent kerfuffle that we had with uh, J. Scott Campbell between both uh, SJWs and uh, non-SJWs. Let's just put it that way, and uh, how all that went down. And uh, I'm going to talk about how how it went down, why it went down, and maybe even give you some insights into, you know, why um, some of this uh, is is still a problem in the industry today. It's it, it's 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 exemplary of, of uh, some of the disconnect I think that the the people in the industry have with the audience. And I wanted to talk about uh, you know some of the reasons why this seems to keep happening again and again and again, without uh, you know without anybody seeming to catch on to why it's happening and, and to change it. So i um, going to be trying something a little different while I'm doing this. Um, normally, you know, I have all my stuff set up where I'm using uh, various sites, you know, for uh, stories and whatnot, getting, you know, their take. I'm going to be taking all this directly from Twitter. So it's going to take, you know, I'm going to try it in a different way. So we're going to see how this works out. Uh, you know, me going to boomer it up a, uh, all the time when we're uh, when we're doing this, so uh, I'm sure we're going to have some issues at some point somewhere. Always always happens when you're trying something new, but uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully things will run smoothly. You know, like I guess I I tried to anticipate as much as I can. We'll see how that goes, and uh, you know, like I said, uh, we'll just have to see. Maybe if if this works out well, maybe something I'll do in the future uh, going forward when talking about uh, topics like this, making it uh, easier to uh, to get go over them with. Uh, people. So um, without further ado, we'll uh, we'll get on with it here. But before we do, let me just first uh, get rid of my uh, camera here. You don't need to see my ugly mug. That's not uh, that's not mandatory at this point, I think. It's not something you're going to want to see. <laughs> Nothing I think anybody wants to see, really. But uh, that's neither here nor there. And let's see how this is. Uh, oop, what's this? Hmm. Shoot, doesn't seem to be working. This. Boy, this will be a real pain if it doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. Let me just try one other thing here. I guess there it is. Boomering it up. Like I said, this is what we do, baby. This is what we do. Uh, let's see if I can... Try it this way and see if I can get in like that. We'll... I will. Hmm. No, it's not going to work either. Well, then I guess what we'll be doing here. Let me see if I can. Boy, this is really going to make it difficult if I can't do it this way. <sighs> okay, so then I guess what I'll have to do... Uh, 
and I'll have to go to somewhere else. See if I can guess. I guess I'm going to have to use a use a uh, website after all. I'm not going to be able to do this through Twitter. It won't let me in because I don't have an account. Even though I was able to do it on another computer, I was able to get around it. Don't know why it won't let me do it on this one, but uh, you know, that's uh, that's how it goes, I guess. So let me see here. What can we do? Okay, so yeah, really sorry about this, folks. I did not expect this. I thought I had all my ducks in a row. Oh well, we all know how that goes. <laughs> the best laid plans. The best laid plans of mice and men. Okay. So let me go here. No, that's not it. No. No, that's not it. Hold on here. Uh, there we go. This might work. Okay, hopefully this works. Okay, I think I got something. At least we got we can get something up now. <laughs> At least we can get something posted up. All right, well, so we'll share the screen finally. Finally, after minutes of boomering it up. And let's bring it up here. There we are. OK, there we go. Now, as you all know, this whole kerfuffle started when uh, somebody tried to, quote unquote, fix J. Scott Campbell's art. And uh, we're going to be using uh, this, uh, this story here from Bounding in the Comments. It kind of covers. In general, it covers it. And, uh, you know, right here, yeah. And, you know, you can see right here, it's, here's, here's right here, you know, um, this cover right here, this is what's got it all started. Somebody decided to fix this cover of Dave Scott Campbell, some loser Tumblr artist called, I'm going to call non-binary non loser. Because uh, that's what all the people who want to use that term are. They're all losers. That's why they call themselves that. Try to make themselves seem more special than they are, and they're not. So, you know, if, if you're if you're going to use that, I'm going to call you what you are. So a non-binary loser decided to fix Campbell's art. And Campbell decided to respond um, by redoing their fix he called it fixing the fix see here it is several days after you know he he refuted a tumblr artist fix for his amazing spider-man 601 cover artwork featuring mary jane watson with a counter critique of his own of his now infamous the fixes in thread campbell took on his various social media accounts to issue another statement on the matter. Now, what happened is, is after he, he did that, he got attacked savagely, as you always are by SJWs. They came at him 
you know, re reaming him, calling him sexist, calling him misogynist, calling him every dirty name in the book, because that's what SJWs do. But, uh, but people came out to defend Campbell, actual real comic book fans, not tumblerinas, not, not people who, you know, look to be offended, the, the, the perpetually offended crowd. It was actually people who love comics, who love his work who have supported him in a lot of cases for decades, came out and defended him. And he was, uh, he was very much uh, taken with that at first. And, uh, you know, he even linked to some videos um, of people. Let me see here. Can I... Get that archive link up. Yeah, here we go. And what he does is after the people after the people defended him, some of them happen to be of the infamous group, infamous in quotes, mind you, uh, Comicsgate. You know, they defended his right to free expression, his right to artistic creativity, to do and draw the way he sees fit, because that's, you know, his right as the artist. You know, it's that's how it's supposed to work. And uh, Campbell then went and uh, did this big tirade after getting a blowback from people inside the industry, I'm sure. Because once he started, you know, thanking people in Comicsgate for defending him and agreeing with him, saying thank you for, you know, pointing out these great things, he linked some videos of some people who were Comicsgate, some who weren't. But of course, since they were all saying the same thing, they're of course all lumped in as Comicsgate because that's how it works with these these types that attack. Is they don't look at individuals; they look at a group, and that's how they treat you. They just lump you right on in, whether you are or not. Campbell himself was even being called a member of Comicsgate by these people. And so after that all went down and he got quote unquote as as from heel versus baby hate face calls it the call. You know, most likely some industry insiders who pressured him to say, "Hey, you need to denounce these people." He then went ahead and uh, did so right here you can see this is this is the post where he did that, you know, just uh, denouncing people. I'm going to try to read this for you even though it's very tiny in in the uh You know, I, I hate that they can't, uh, that you can't, that you can't see his stuff. Oh, there we go. Maybe this will help me see it. Uh, no, nope, that's not going to work. Okay. That uh, figures. Why should any of it work? Why should any of it work? Okay, so I'm going to try to read this. It's very tiny print. Um, he talks about uh, about comments that were buried in about there were there were nasty comments that were buried in my the fixes in thread. FYI, I've spent the last few nights spending hours trying to catch as many of them as I could. But let me tell you, policing a hot topic in a constantly changing IG thread, it ain't easy. IG's algorithms move and shifts timelines, and often it feels like you're lost in a corn maze or the, the film Inception. So if you find one there that hasn't been purged, do not view it as an endorsement from me. At some point, I had to get on with my work and my life and I'm literally the only one who can monitor it. So I guess he doesn't have a social media, um, you know, uh, people working for him the way some people do. Um, I've considered just locking up the comments threads altogether, but was concerned that would be seen, taken in the wrong way. Like I was blocking open discourse or seen as a retreat by me or something. So at first it comes out like he's just saying, you know, I'm not responsible for these comments. I've tried to get rid of the nastier ones. You know, I might miss some, but they're not in, I don't endorse them. It's fine so far. No problems yet. But then, then, then this is where we start to go off the rails. Let me be clear in this as I possibly can. 
I'm completely and totally against any bigoted comments, anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans, hate speech of any kind, threats, any of that sort of thing. Again, nothing to disagree with there. You know, I think most people would fall into that category as well. The people who were defending him would probably fall into that category. But here's where he go. Here's where he 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 screws it up. I have no affiliation with Comiskate. I'm not alt right. Not, not anti-woman or endorse any fringe groups that push hate, period. So right there, he's conflated Comics Gate with anti-LGBT, anti-trans, you know, uh, threats, anti-woman. He's already conflated these things now. And sh there is nothing there to differentiate. It's just it's all the same. It's all one big block. The post and commentary in question, whichever side you may fall on the topic, was intended to be playful, perhaps a bit snarky in tone, but absolutely not meant to inspire hate. Some have insinuated that by absolutely, some have insinuated that by, by referring to the person as non-binary Finn, which is the name of the person who fic, did the quote unquote original fix of Campbell's art, that I was somehow mocking the term. I wasn't. It was only, it was the only name I had to work with and even settled on NBF to try to make that a non-issue. See, again, just more proof that he's bending over backwards not to offend somebody to people who will perpetually be offended no matter what you do. That's the whole point. You know, these are the same people who they say when you don't use their pronouns, well, that's bigotry. Well, here he is using the pronouns, and yet somehow it's still bigotry. So if there's no pleasing them, you know, so he shouldn't even try. Um because it wasn't the issue. Art fixing, artist disrespect, art community bullying, and more importantly, art censorship was the discussion. I don't believe art censorship is a left or right thing. Now, you know, see, again, this uh, he's trying to play both sides here, but again, what did he do? He took one side and insulted them and basically said that they're anti-trans, anti-this, all hate speech, they're all these things. That's, that's what he did. Okay, that, that guy got the important part here. So that, that's what he did. He did that to these people. Yeah, see, here's here's the, right here, they have it all listed. Uh, and let's see. I'll see. In my observation, both sides use it as a toll. I guess he meant as a tool and as a strategy for their individual means and agendas. But at my core, as a creative individual and as an artist, let me state I'm fundamentally against censorship and being told in general what I can and cannot draw by any group, political or otherwise. Now, again, no problem in that. There's nothing wrong with what he said, except he didn't make it about both sides. He made it about one side. He made it about one group. He made it about one, one issue. And again, he, he, he's now trying to backpedal on this the heck uh damn ads uh let's see lost my place boy this is really turned into a real real mess <sighs> okay um just because I'm at odds with a lot of extreme viewpoints and attempts at censorship of my art from the left doesn't mean I'm in alignment with alt-right and hate speech either. Again, once again, now referring to Comiskate as alt-right and hate speech. I know we're led to believe that in the current landscape is an either-or. You're either with us or against us. It's black or it's white. It's not. Except it kind of is because there's one side who's saying... You should have the freedom to do what you want. You should be able to create the art that you want and not have people tell you you can't or have it censored or have yourself blacklisted because they don't like it. And there's one side that's doing the blacklisting, that's doing the censoring, that's doing the, 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 the crackdown on creativity. So it really is an either or. But of course, again, see here he is trying to play both sides against the middle. He, he wants to be seen as this middle of the road, moderate guy, but he's really not. You know, he's already shown here he's not that guy.
he he is more than willing to throw people under the bus. This isn't a presidential election. There can be and are many shades of gray in regards to all kinds of different topics. And as an artist in this modern world, I find myself feeling I'm somewhat in the middle. A lot of us, and a lot of us, and I feel a lot of us are feeling that way these days. Um, no, I don't think a lot of us are. The ones who are trying to feel in the middle are the Weasley people who want to try to play both ends against the middle. You know, and again, it's not going to work because one side is for freedom of expression, freedom to create and the other side is not. And there's no way to walk a line between those two groups, which makes why he threw the one that was defending him and defending free expression and defending artistic creativity under the bus makes no sense. But again, it, it makes no sense, you know, only if you just look at it directly. But when, when you look at it a little more deeply, you'll come to understand some things that I've come to see. Uh, let's see when these things jump like that. Okay. After facing an understandable outpouring of backlash from comic skate supporters, many of whom cordially attempted to clear up Campbell's misconceptions about the group, the artist followed up his initial statement with a tweet stating, who knew that clarifying that you're against hate speech, making threats, bigotry, etc., would get so many upset and drop you? But hey, that's our modern society. I stand by what I stated. So see right there, doubling down. You insulted one side. You said this one side is all this anti this, anti that bigotry. While trying to play both ends against the middle, saying it's not a left or a right thing. And while I'm in the middle, no, you're not. You're very see, he's very much in with the camp that attacked him. He is of their political stripe, whether he wants to admit that or not. I mean, it's pretty obvious by this statement. You know, people trying to tell him, no, what you're saying about us isn't true, somehow translates to, you know, that, that, that people get upset because he said he was against hate speech and bigotry. But that's not what they're upset by. They're upset by saying, you guys in this group and this side are aligned with hate speech and bigotry, where he didn't do so with the other, which again, we'll, we'll come up here in a moment. Here it is, as from heel versus babyface, he comes in and, and pretty much just puts it all down for him. A lot of people threw, threw support behind you and your freedom to create, then got labeled alt-right or anti this and that. And you likely got pressured into your statement by the very people who have torn mainstream comics apart. I like your work I like your work a lot, but you bit the hand that feeds. There it is. That's exactly what he did. The people who were defending him were offensive to the people who were attacking him. And rather than stand by the people who were defending him, he then took the side of the people who were attacking him because they said, these people are all right. These people are bigots. And you are aligning with bigots by supporting them, by linking to their videos that support you, by telling them thank you for, 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 for supporting free ex artistic expression and my right to draw what I want to draw. By doing, by supporting those people, by, by, by even just thanking them for that, you are endorsing them, you are aligning yourself with the alt-right. And, and again, it just goes to show where he truly lies. Because if you didn't, believe that. If you weren't someone of that group who believes that anybody who doesn't think the way we do is automatically alt-right. You know, alt-right is going to be a catch-all term for anybody that far leftists don't like. If you're a Republican, if you're a conservative, if you're a libertarian, if you're, you know, one of the few moderate left people, left-leaning people that there are still out there, you know, people who are like what you would call the old JFK liberals, those types of people, any of those groups, you're all alt-right now. Now, if Campbell were truly this man in the middle he wants to project himself as, he wouldn't just take those people's word at that. He would have been like, wait a minute, how can they be all right? They're not for censorship. They're not trying to just stifle my creativity and my creative expression. You know, they're they're defending it. Alt-right people wouldn't do that. But see, again, that would require him to get outside of his own personal political bubble in his mind, which again is more aligned with the people who are attacking him than the people who are defending him. And then again, he just doubles down further on it and triples down to in his response to add, which if you had any question in your mind before thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe Campbell really is just middle of the road. Here it is right here. 
if you self-identify with hate speech, then I'm sorry you got your feelings hurt. This is what he says to heel versus babyface. This is what he says to Az. You know, that so he's saying that Az is upset because he identifies with hate speech. Not that Az is upset because he was maligned as someone who identifies with hate speech unjustly by Campbell. No, no, no. It's he must identify with this. So that's why you're upset. No, he's not. He's upset because you said he aligns with this and he does not. Again, this is this is the whole tactic that these people use, you know, it is this, this is, this is just an updated version of, so when did you stop beating your wife? You know, you're guilty no matter what, it's just to what degree do you want to be guilty? You know, and then, and then, of course, he tries to cover for all, you know, I could have also been shaming the hate speech that I saw from the left too. Nothing about drawing sexy ladies identified me with either political stance. No, that's not what identified you with the political stance, Jay. That's not what did that. No, no. What did that was you attacking the very people who were defending you because the ones who were attacking you said they were alt-right. And then you just decided to go, oh, I guess they're alt-right then. That is why, that is that is where the political stance comes in. And I saw no shaming of hate speech from the left. I heard you say, I hate threats. Well, yeah, so do most people. But I didn't see you say, I'm not part of Comiskate, nor am I part of any hard left organizations. See, nothing where you could show that you're trying to show both sides, where you're trying to be even handed. No, it was very much one side that you denounced. You know, and then as the story goes on here, he has to issue yet another clarification. Okay. After all this blows up on him, he, it blows up because he attacked the people who defended him. That's the bottom line. Whether they were Comiskate, whether they weren't Comiskate, whether they're politically on the right, whether they're not, it didn't matter. Those people were attacked by him, lumped in as alt-right, you know, hate speech bigots. That's what they were lumped in as. Whether they and, and again, you'll see here, he doesn't like being identified in ways that aren't what he is about, but yet he did that to others and he can't seem to somehow see this, but you'll see in a moment here. I've taken the time to hear out several individuals who felt I painted them in a poor light when I made my statement about the divisive and heated rhetoric hidden within my message threads on Instagram and Twitter this past week. Some clarification that I feel is important. What I was stating earlier is that I am not comfortable being implicated or included in any group, in, in a group, any group, without my consent, regardless of the group. But that's not what you said, you see. And again, I'm betting nobody on the comic skate side said you were comic skate. No one said you were part of the group. They were just people defending you because they believe that you should have the right to do the art you want to do and be creative and express yourself how you see fit. They weren't the ones labeling you as part of the group. It was the people who were attacking him who were likely labeling him as Comiskate because he used Comiskaters, you know, uh, you know, thanking them for supporting his work, uh, linking to videos of people who may or may not be Comiskate who defended, you know, uh, his fix of the fix and all this kind of thing. So because he did that, that's what got him labeled Comiskate by the ones who were attacking him from the start. But it wasn't the people in that group who were saying he is of the group. It was the people who hate that group who says he was part of that group. And again, see, you can see here, he doesn't like being implicated as part of something he is not, but yet he had no problem throwing people under the bus as alt-right because he was told by the people who attacked him initially that they are, and that was all he needed to hear. Oh, these people in Comiskate are anti-trans, anti, uh, anti anti-woman bigots? Oh, well, then uh, I, I, I can't side with them. Throw them right under the bus. Never mind that that's not what they're about, that that's not what they do, that this is a lie that has been debunked many times. There are women who are members of Comiskate. There are gay people who are members of Comiskate. There are minorities who are members of Comiskate who would, who would identify themselves as a Comiskater. So how can you be anti-woman, anti-gay, anti-minority you know, and have them in your group? That'd be like the KKK having black members. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. If your whole bag is white supremacy, well, then you wouldn't want anyone non-white in your group. And if you had non-white people in your group, well, then you're not really white supremacy, are you? Because you're allowing people that are non-white in the group. 
So again, but this is only something somebody would know if they actually either did some research or talked to some people, you know, beforehand instead of just unilaterally just deciding, oh, well, since I was told you were this, then I guess I'll just go with that as, as the answer. They remind that again, this is from the very people who were attacking him and attacking his art. This is who he chose to believe. The reason I specifically referred to this group Comiskate is because it was the only it was the only specific group that kept coming up by name. Well, yeah, because that's the name that is given to anybody who disagrees with the far left ideologues that are currently running the industry and running on Twitter and running around attacking anyone that doesn't agree with them. That's why those people don't haven't given themselves a title. And in fact, the name Comiskate was created by those people. They coined that word and put it on people as sort of a scarlet letter. That was the intention of the name, to make those people, the people who defended J. Scott Campbell, those types of people, make them, you know, persona non grata with this scarlet letter of Comicsgate as their, as, as their, uh, their label. The only thing the Comicsgate people did is they said, we're going to take that and we're going to throw it back in your face by being Comicsgate and we're going to stand for freedom of expression and free, free, you know, freedom of creativity, uh, anti-censorship, anti, you know, uh, uh, superficial diversity, anti, you know, destroying uh, iconic characters for the sake of, of, of uh, fake inclusion. All these types of things is what they're against. That's what they stand for, and because they do, they, 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 they took the name that was forced on them by the people doing those things as a way to sort of tweak their nose. That's what the whole point of it is. But again, if you weren't paying attention to any of this, then you wouldn't know, as J. Scott Campbell is obviously ignorant to all this, but yet he had no problem maligning those people just because he was told to do so. Honestly, from what I've read and seen in documents about Gamergate and, and that whole fiasco, anything with gate in it probably gets an instant recoil from me, which again, see, again, bespeaks right to the point. Isn't that bigotry, Scott? You're not finding out the facts. You're not talking to people. You're not being Mr. Man in the Middle trying to, to, to learn what the people are really all about, are you, Jay Scott? No, you're just, oh, they got gate in the name? Oh, well, forget it. They, they obviously are bigots. Again, as I've shown here, that's not true. And some individuals who were making hateful and bigoted attacks were doing so in the name of CG. Yes, because people who aren't CG could never take the name and then do nasty things with it and pretend to be part of Comicsgate when they're not as a way to sort of run them down. Of course not. But even if these people who did it were actual CG members, again, do you judge everyone by the actions of a few? How many individuals? Was it lots and lots or was it just a few individuals? Were the majority of individuals defending your art? Were the majority of individuals defending free expression? Oh, they were. Oh, so maybe that's more what they're about. And these, these hangers on, these, these guys who are going too far, maybe they represent the whole of, of everybody. See, and, and it's funny because that's exactly how the people who attacked him are. If, if, you, know, if you were part of their conglomerate of, of the left, then, then what you are is, is you know, you, you know, you cannot. If there's anybody in there who goes too far, well, they're just an individual, and they don't represent the whole, and they don't speak for everybody. They only speak for themselves. You can't hold us accountable to those few individuals who cross the line, and that's fine if that's the standard, but that's not the even-handed standard that is used. The standard that is used for the opposition is the exact opposite. Whereas, if they're against you, find the worst few actors you can find and say they represent the whole. They are a monolith. They are they are a conglomerate. They all believe this, no matter what they say. Otherwise, these guys represent the whole. Even if they, they even if they not even actually part of the group, doesn't matter. They represent it. That's them. That's what they're about. See, this this is it's a, it's a tried and true tactic to smear people that you don't agree with. And again, I would think J. Scott Campbell, having been attacked probably more than once like this for his artwork would understand that concept. Gee, you're attacked unjustly by people trying to find the worst possible thing they can find to say that this is what you are. But you're not that. Well, gee, Scott, if you're not that, GJ Scott, if you're not that, then why why are you assuming other people are? Mr. Man in the Middle? Why are you doing a man in the middle wouldn't do that? Only someone who is on the other side would do that. Some individuals who are making hateful and bigoted attacks okay uh it's important 
to also state I encountered some very toxic and hateful things being said from the other side as well. Here he is trying to do a CYA move. Uh, see, I, I, I'm not just blasting just comics, Casey. I'm blasting the other side, too. Yeah, uh-huh. After you already threw them under the bus, after you already had, had them labeled alt-right bigots. Yeah, now all of a sudden, oh, uh, well, there was some hateful stuff from the other side, too. Hence my earlier comments about feeling more pushed to the middle of these two extreme viewpoints about art. There is no two extremes. Well, I mean, I guess there is two. There's the extreme saying you should have the creative freedom to do what you want. And then there's a creative, and then there's a side that says that your creative freedom is second place to somebody's sense of offense and should be censored. That's the, that's the two extremes. Those, 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 it, it's one or the other. You can't have, there's no middle road in there. You either have freedom of creativity and expression or you don't. That's it. So if you're in between those two, I don't know where you think you're standing. Uh, I'm for free expression, unless it's something I don't like. I mean, that's about the only way I can see that being in the middle. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all for free expression for myself and for others, unless I don't like that person, then I'm not for their free expression. I mean, is that the middle? Because that's the only way I see it being a middle-of-the-road thing. And that doesn't seem to, to, to look too well on J. Scott Campbell now, does it? I stand by what I said. I don't tolerate any sort of hate speech, bigotry, racism, woman hate, and I will always push back on any association with individuals who act this way. Oh, okay. So uh, I take it you've uh, attacked some of your fellow creators who've attacked people in Comiskate that way. You know, uh, people like Ron Mars and Jerry Conway and Mike McCone and Mark Wade and Gail Simone and, uh, you know, Mag Visaggio and... Oh, no, you haven't? Oh, you haven't? You, you've let that hate speech and bigotry and, and hatred towards towards people, uh, you know, just stand because, well, it has nothing to do with you? Oh, well, gee, that's that's how very, uh, how very cowardly of you, Jay Scott. How very cowardly. See, again, he doesn't tolerate it if it's from a certain sect. But when it's coming from his side of the aisle, when it's coming from his group, when it's coming from his his friends and his, his, his uh, you know, um, co-workers, all of a sudden, well, no, I got nothing to say on that. That's just, uh, I got nothing to say. However, if individual members of this Comiskey community animately insist that they are not what they stand, that's not what they stand for, I feel I should give these folks the benefit of doubt and take them at their word and not paint the entire group with the same brush. Yeah, again, except you already did. The damage is done. You went ahead and did it, and now in, in the aftermath, after the blowback, now all of a sudden you say, well, maybe I should reevaluate. You should have did your reevaluating before it got to this point. You know, what happened to judging people by, by what they do and not what people say about them? You know, what were these people doing? They were defending you. They were defending your art. They were defending free creative expression. That's what they were doing. Now, again, were there maybe individuals who said some nasty things that went too far? Perhaps. Find me a group organization or movement that doesn't have at least a few apples in it that are, that, that are a little little on the, on the sour side. Go ahead. You can. Anything. You know, even the civil rights movement had people in it who who did things that were that, that if you looked at it, well, they went they went over the line. But does that mean the whole civil rights movement is no good? Does that mean that they, what the civil rights movement was really about doesn't matter? Because, well, there were these few bad actors who did these, these terrible things. No. The civil rights movement was very important. It, it mattered. And so does Comiskate because of what they represent, what they truly stand for. Not what, not what their adversaries say they are. Not what people like J. Scott Campbell want to believe that they are or is told what they are. No, what they actually are. They are longtime comic fans who have supported this industry for decades, who have seen the degradation brought on by overt political stances by activists turned creators. That is what they are against. They are against that because those people are the very types who are creating the censorship that Hugh J. Scott Campbell claim you do not support. But rather than speak out against those people who may damage your career, instead you throw under the bus the very people who were defending your right to that creative freedom. Do, do you see the issue here now? Do you see now why it's not as wasn't upset because he's he's aligned with hate speech and I self-identify as, as, as part of hate speech. He was upset because he doesn't. And that and, and, and what I just told you, that's what he stands for. And you threw him and a lot of other people like him 
under the bus because the people attacking you told you they're alt right, and if you don't denounce them, we will denounce you as alt right. You who say you hate to be labeled in ways that you are not, yet you had no problem doing that to people that was inconvenient to you at that moment in time. That's the issue, Jay. That is the problem. They insist they are not a hive mind as they as they put as they as they put which probably was which okay it's just very bad writing Jay very bad uh, they insist they're not a hive mind as they put it which probably is why their messaging is very confusing to someone in my position who really doesn't keep up with all of the noise so what that basically says to me is you had no idea what you were talking about when you ran them down as alt right woman hating anti trans anti LGBT bigots. You just were told that by people. You maybe read some 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 headline of a hit piece that calls them that, and so well, that's it. That's that's all I need. That's the problem, Jay. That's the problem. This is why this is why you got the blowback you did. But again, we haven't really touched the reasoning of why you're this way. But we'll get into that in a, in a moment. We're going to finish this out here. Uh, he went on to say that he had in, several several have interacted with me very respectfully and we openly engaged about our mutual concern about art censorship and exercising our artistic freedoms of expression and they've been very civil reasonable and occasionally even delightful so there you go you you talked to people and you found out that what those that told you they were wasn't really true amazing how that happens isn't it when you talk to people you find out what they really are about rather than just listening to people who are telling you what they're about who themselves have their own agenda an agenda i will remind you j scott campbell that was against you that was against your art they tried to tell you your art was wrong it was sexist it was misogynistic it was evil that's what they tried to do to you okay those are the people that you sided with over the ones who were defending you and now you see, well, gee, these people aren't all that they claim they were. Gee, imagine that. Imagine my shock. And then uh, we're going to finish out here with this thing here is there are certainly there, there are these are important and valuable discussions we should be having more openly and more thoughtfully without it devolving into tribalism and absolutes. Well, again, I go back to the point of in this specific case, it is an absolute. You either have creative freedom or you don't. There is no middle ground there. You either can tell the types of stories you want and draw the kinds of things you want to draw, be artistic in the way you want to be, or you can't. That's it. That's an absolute. And as far as having these important discussions, well, again, you can't have discussions when only one side is willing to discuss. The people in Comiscape are willing to discuss. I've seen it. It's those on the other side that don't want to discuss. Their whole bag is anything that does not you know, focus on our agenda of, you know, destroying icons and re reimagining them in a quote unquote inclusive way, you know, that, that doesn't, you know, that, that then, then you're a bigot. That's their mindset. So how do you have a discussion with those people? How do you have a discussion with people who, who are so convinced that they are so virtuous, they are above reproach, and anyone who doesn't think like they do is automatically a bigot? How do you have discussions with those kinds of people, J. Scott Campbell? How do you do that? Where is there discussion to be had with those people? There isn't, you know, and, you know, I agree that there should be these, these are important discussions. They should be being had and, you know, and they're not, not due to tribalism so much as it is to just one group believing that, that there is no discussion to be had to, to the, the people who attack you for them. There is no discussion. It's decided, you know, the science is settled, you know, that's all it is. It's done. We have decided this is what it is and anything else is wrong bigoted and evil that's their stance and when that's the stance you, you can't debate with that that's actually that stance is actually there to prevent debate to tell you just you believe this or shut up listen and believe there it is right there how many times have we heard that line from these activist types but again that's the point activism isn't about discussion it isn't about debate it's about forcing people to capitulate to your agenda that's all it is. So to these folks, I apologize for whatever grief or embarrassment I may have caused you with my earlier word jumble and wide brush. I hope these individuals who feel I unfairly grouped them into a smaller group of bad actors will accept my apology. It's not a good feeling being accused of statements and actions you haven't committed and aren't in your heart. I can certainly attest to that. 
But you notice again, here he is again, not really bad. Oh, these individuals that I've talked to, I'm sorry to those people, but not how many did, didn't you talk to who you also offended? You see, this is the thing. You you were talking about a certain certain people who were saying certain things, but yet you broad brushed the entire group. And now it says, well, these few individuals I've talked to are okay. You know, again, still still not really quite backtracking it the way you would think he is. But again, I like how he admits that, you know, he doesn't like to be accused of being something he's not, but yet that's exactly what he did. And then he closes it out. I love this. I'm sure I'll be vilified by some on both sides of this debate for clarifying myself and actually talking to individuals of differing viewpoints. But I can only be true to my own values and sense of right and wrong and continue to treat others as I want to be treated. Um, well, so are you saying you want to be treated as being broad brushed the way you, you did to people in Comiskate? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, OK. So you want to be treated better than that. But when you do it, it's somehow OK. And oh, I'll just apologize later if I have to. Eh, no big deal. But yet when it happens to you, it's a big deal because that was that was his whole point in all this. He was being called Comicsgate by the people who originally attacked him and his art. And that's what made him denounce the people in Comicsgate who were defending him. I mean, again, the, 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 the mental gymnastics you have to go through with this stuff. You know, and I love that I'll be vilified by 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 some on both sides. No, no, you won't. You'll be vilified by the ones on the other side completely. Yes, they will completely vilify you for even even backing down a little bit on your denunciation. You know, the minute you said, well, some of these people are OK, that's it. You're done with them. And as far as the other side, well, you know, once bitten, twice shy, J. Scott Campbell. How can they trust you now? You've already shown you'd be willing to throw them under the bus. What happens the next time this goes down? The next time you're called Comicsgate, the next time Comicsgate members defended you, and then the people who attack you say, if you don't denounce them, we're going to call you a, 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 a Comicsgate bigot. What are you going to do? You're going to you're going to just do it again? Of course you will. Of course you will. You've already shown again when you with your replies to ads, you know, and your little smarmy thing about like, gee, I didn't know clarifying that you're against hate speech would be such a such a thing to get everyone upset. You know, your little snarky way of doing all that, that's telling. That's telling where you really lie. Like I said, you're not a man of the middle the way you claim. He isn't. He is absolutely not a man in the middle. He is a man of the left. The only difference between him and the hard leftists, the ones who attacked him, is he likes to draw the way he likes to draw. And he wants to be able to do that. And he wants to be able to make money doing that. And these people wouldn't let him do that. If they had their, if they had their druthers, he won't be able to do that. So he's against them for that reason only, on that specific topic. But he is not a man in the middle. He is not a moderate-minded guy. He is of the same group as the ones who attacked them. I will continue to stand up for my values, but I will will try even harder to listen, learn, and try to bring us together rather than push us farther apart. Except, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's going to happen now is he'll wait for this to all to blow over. And then the very next time someone attacks his art, as again, they always do, the people on, on the left will attack him again. And then people in Comiskate, some who have accepted this apology, will come out to defend him again, as they did this time. And then he'll be labeled as an alt-right bigot because he's he's supporting and he's you know sort of giving you know uh, endorsement to comiskate and then he'll come out and say i'm not comiskate I'm, I'm against bigotry and he'll do the same exact thing all over again again his responses after the initial insult show you this you know it's only after so much pressure that he, he, he even backed down a little bit and there's a reason for that and again it's one of the things i had for twitter that i can't show you now because of because twitter won't let me uh show it to you but someone posted on his twitter a picture of the the piece he did the fix of the fix that he did the where he took the one that they fixed his image with and did it in his style and he put it up on auction and i think at the last tally it was around fifteen thousand dollars and the money will supposedly be going to charity which if he's doing that you know good on him he took something negative and he turned around into something positive that's nice good on you but what that also shows him is what he has to lose. 
because if some little sketchy thing he just whipped up to sort of clap back on people attacking his art can draw $15,000 in just a few days. Well, gee, if you ticked off Comicsgate and all those people who have spent their money on your work and they suddenly stopped, well, that could put a serious dent in your pocketbook, couldn't it? Could that be why you suddenly decide, well, I'm going to talk to some people, why I'm going to try to try to listen and, and learn and, and bring us together all of a sudden when before you were all very flippant, you know, oh, I, if you identify with hate speech, I'm sorry you're upset, you know, that kind of thing. Could that be why you're flip-flopping from that? You see, this is what I'm talking about. You know, um, someone I know who uh, was in the service. You know, I talked to them about stuff like this, and they said the thing with a guy like J. Scott Campbell, he goes, he goes, it's in the entertainment industry. He goes, it's also in the military. He goes, there's usually two types of people in any kind of given industry. You have the people who are mission focused and the people who are organization focused. Now, in the case of mission focused in the, in the military, you got people who want to get the job done. They're the guys, I want to do the job. I want to get it done, you know, and they're focused on the mission. They're not worried about how it looks. They're not worried about, you know, moving up the ladder. They're not worried about, you know, political games and, and, and one-upsmanship. They just want, they want to do the job and do the job right because the mission is what matters. The organizational guys are your careerists, the guys who are focused on moving up that ladder, the guys who do play the political games, the guys who do, you know, want to, want to you know, worry about how something might look because how it might affect their career. Those guys. They're okay for the mission so long as it reflects well for them. And they'll work with the guys who are mission as long as it works to their benefit. But now what you have today is a third group has infiltrated, the activist group. And they don't care about the mission. In fact, their ideology is probably very much against the mission. And they don't care about the organization. For them, it's just a tool to push their agenda. And if it has to die and fall apart and, and, and burn to ashes in the interim to get that to happen... They're all for that. Now, the first thing they do is destroy the people who are mission focused because those are the people who will be direct, directly opposed to their activist agenda. Meanwhile, you have your organizational people who they will go wherever the wind blows. If the wind blows to the activism side, they will cut ties with all the, the mission focused people and side with the activists, even though the activists themselves will eventually come for them. You know, no one is safe from the activists. The activists want to get rid of the mission, mission focused and the organizational focused people. But they'll use the organizational ones as long as they toe the line. And that's where I think J. Scott Campbell kind of falls in. He's he's looking out for number one. He's siding with the activists in every way, except for this one way with his art, where he's more mission focused. And that's why he linked people who may or may not have been comic skate who were defending his art, because that's what he is like, hey, that works for me. That's what I want. I'm mission focused when it comes to the art. But on everything else, he's either organizational focused or activist focused which is why he had no problem throwing those very people who defended him under the bus. And if push comes to shove, I believe he'll do so again without hesitation. All this talk of I've learned and I'm going to try to listen and some of these individuals will try to help me see that they're not all the same and they shouldn't be all painted with the same broad brush, all that will fall to the wayside the very next time the activists come for him, as they did this time. You know, and he isn't the first. He isn't the first. Frank Cho has had this happen to him. You know, uh, Adam Hughes has had this happen to him. Milo Minara had this happen to him. He, hell, some would say he's the protogenesis of all this with that Spider Woman cover. That's where it all began of trying to destroy, you know, sexy, you know, vivacious, dynamic imagery of, of the feminine form. That's where it all begins is with that Spider Woman cover. And it's just been growing ever since. You know, and again, look at look 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 at that. Frank Cho has denounced Comicsgate, and lots of others have denounced Comicsgate. People who were defended by people who may have been Comicsgate. You know, Frank Cho's work. He, I'm sure, he was defended by from those activists by people in Comicsgate, and yet he came out and denounced them. Why? They were defending you. They were defending your work. They were defending your your creative freedom. 
Doesn't that matter? Well, no, because in the end, he's an activist minded person, just like the ones attacking him. And he doesn't want to be on the wrong side of history. Oh, I don't want to be associated with those people because that they're on the wrong side of history. Never mind that they're the ones fighting for your freedom. Never mind they're the ones siding with your ability to be creative in the way you want to be creative. See, and this is what I'm talking about. So Campbell is the same way. He sees that he could lose a lot of money by taking off Comics Gate, which is why he's back down. But when it comes back around to it, if it comes down to it again and the choice is there, do I side with the Comics Gate people or the activists? He'll side with the activists. The very people trying to destroy him. You know, the very people who were destroying the industry itself. I mean, we just saw that in the latest book scan report uh, from April saying that the top 20 graphic novels and, 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 you know, trade paperbacks all were manga. All 20. In fact, I don't even think a, a Western comic even cracked the top 25 of them. So, you know, there it is right there. You know, American Western comics are dying on the vine. And what, what are they going to do? You know, where is Frank Cho going to go? Where is J. Scott Campbell going to go? Where is, you know, where are they going to go if, if, if American comics go under? Is it going to go over to manga? They don't want them. They don't want those activists in there. You know, they, they, the people in manga have actually flipped the bird to the activist minded, and they, which, which is part of the reason why they hate they hate them so much and why they're attacking them now. You've seen that going on. It, it's been incre ever, ever since the book scan thing came out showing manga dominating. I've seen a very marked increase in people attacking manga style art and manga style storytelling. This is what they do. This is this is how they do it, you know. And it's it. I know it's because of that. And it, it's it's the same thing here with J. Scott Campbell. He he's problematic. He's useful when he attacks Comicsgate. So you know, but his art is problematic. So we have to attack him for it. And they will eventually come for you, J. Scott. They will cancel you completely at some point, no matter how much you bend over backwards to try to please these people. They will do that. That is how this always ends. It never ends any other way. It never ends. These people are out to eradicate anything they disagree with. And that includes your art style. So go ahead and keep biting the hand of the people who are trying to support you, who are trying to protect you, who are trying to defend you and your creative freedom. Because in the end, you'll be the one that suffers the most because they will come for you. They always do. And if you think for a single blessed moment that that won't happen, you know, I, I'll just I'll just remind you. J. Scott Campbell, I will remind you right here, right now, of why they will never, ever, ever stop coming for you. And here it is right here. This is why. And this. And this, this, and st oh, oh, there you go, and still more. This is what they're out to destroy, J. Scott Campbell. Your ability to do this, and that, and this, even when fully clothed. This is this is what these these neo Puritans of the left are trying to destroy and they don't care. They feel completely justified. They feel completely righteous. Your freedoms don't matter as much as their sense of offense at you drawing images like this and that and this, you know, and what I'm showing you here, this is not exhaustive, folks. This is not exhaustive. This, this is this is just a sampling of, of what he's done. I could have sat here for an hour showing you photo after photo, pick after pick of his work. It's just like this. And I, I ended it on this one specifically 
for two reasons. One is for the irony of her saying that it's current year. You know, this cover was done in 2019. So she's saying it's, it's, this is 2019. Ironic, considering that's exactly what these people are saying to him. Your art style is is sexist and, and, and misogynistic and antiquated. You know, it belongs in another time. This is this is this is this is current year. You need to stop drawing like that. So that's the irony of, of her saying that is funny. But then look, look at the background. Look at Peter. Look at his face. Look, look at look at the expression. This is what they hate. This is what they this is what they're trying to destroy. Anything a guy like that will enjoy. Oh, he would he enjoys looking at his hot wife that way. Oh, that male gaze got to destroy it. Got to destroy anything that's connected to the male gaze. It must be ended. It must be brought down. So they will never, ever side with you, J. Scott Campbell. You can side with them all you want, but because of these images I just showed, you will never be one of them in their eyes. The only people who will care are the people like those in Comicsgate. They care because they care about the art. They care about the storytelling. They care about the art form. They want to see it survive. They want it to continue to exist. The people that attack you don't. So to side with them is basically suicide for you, career-wise, that is. Although I wouldn't put it past them to go even further than that at some point. And this is what I'm saying is this so, but he can't see this. J. J. Scott Campbell cannot see this. He does not see the hypocrisy in wanting to draw the way he does and yet siding with people politically who are against everything his art is about. But he doesn't know any other way. He is a creature of the left. He is a leftist. He is. You can, you can, you can cry and whine, J. Scott Campbell, about me labeling you all you want, but it's true. You are not a man of the middle. You are not a moderate. You are a man of the left. And when push comes to shove, in any situation, you will always side with those on the left, as you did here. That's what this shows. So to all the Comiskate folk out there who want to accept his apology, I understand. You love his work. You've supported him for decades. You want to keep this kind of, of artistry and creative expression alive. I, I totally understand. But just know, he is not your friend. He is not going to be someone to take your side. When push comes to shove, he will throw you under the bus again. I guarantee it. This is what he is. He's a guy who, who is only mission-focused when it's on his art. Everything else is activist-focused. You can see from what he wrote in those dissertations. You can see what he, how, 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 how when he responded to people like Az from Heel vs. Babyface. You can see this. He is activist-minded all the way down the line except when it comes to his art. So don't think by supporting him here in this way that that gets you any brownie points with him because it doesn't. He will fall on you again. He will throw you under the bus again if the situation backs him in a corner like he was here. Because in the end, He's not all that different from the activists. He believes what they believe. He just believes his art should be the exception to that rule. And that's, you know, that's that's the way it is. And that's why you can't have those thoughtful discussions that he was talking about earlier. You can't have those thoughtful debates. Because it isn't about having discussions with these types of people. They don't want discussion. They don't want debate. They want capitulation. They want conformity. And anyone who doesn't, well, to the gulag with you. I mean, it's no different from all these people wanting vaccine passports in this country. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I thought this was the United States in the 2020s. I didn't know this was Germany in the 1930s. Papers, please. No, that's not what we're about. 
but yet that's what these types want us to be about. Why? To weed out the people they hate. You know, I just saw a story recently about this whole thing about the CDC revising the mask mandates, saying that you don't have to wear them now except for in certain situations. And people on the left are going crazy. Why? Because before, when someone didn't wear a mask, they could generally believe, well, that person's the conservative, and so now I know who to hate. Now that people can go without masks, well, now how do they tell the conservatives from everybody else? They can't. They, they have lost the thing that will help them be able to discern, quote unquote, the enemy. And see, that's what this is. People who enjoy J. Scott Campbell's art, they're the enemy. People who enjoy Frank Cho's art, they're the enemy. That's how you differentiate them. See, you like this? Well, then you're a bigot. And this is what J. Scott Campbell doesn't seem to understand. These people will never buy your work, J. Scott Campbell. They will never support you. They will never back down from, from, from this stance they have against you and your work. This will always be the case. You need to wise up. But again, like I said, he's a man of the left, so I doubt he will. And, you know, it, this all could have been avoided with one simple thing. When he did his original dissertation about, you know, being against hate and bigotry and blah, blah, blah. He just would have kept out Comiskate. Just kept the name out. And just says, I'm not part of any group or organization. Now, of course, we in the know would know what he meant. But at least he would have left the name out. At least then it wouldn't have been so blatantly obvious he's throwing them under the bus. See, then it would have really been a case of him saying, you know, well, you know, how do you know I wasn't talking about the hatred coming from the people on the left? Well, see, then I would think maybe there's a chance that was true. But when you singled out one side, you made it clear where your allegiance lies. And it isn't with those people. The ones defending you. So there it is, folks. I mean, can it be spelled out any more clearly? I don't think so. You know, um, Young Ripper, Eric July, shout out. He uh, He's just been speaking out on this, saying that people need to move away from supporting the mainstream at all. Now, he, now he, he said that he doesn't expect you to drop it entirely. He understands that some people are very nostalgically drawn to certain characters and, and things and certain certain properties. But he said that is what he's, his idea was is make more than half of the budget you would spend on this stuff away from the mainstream. Support content creators who are alternative to this. So less J. Scott Campbell's and more, you know, Graham Nolan's. Less Frank Cho's and more, you know, um, that umbrella guys. Stuff like that. Support the people who actually care about what you care about. Because supporting people who don't, well, this is what you end up with. You end up with them throwing you under the bus when you're inconvenient to them. And that doesn't make for a healthy industry. It doesn't make for a healthy community. It doesn't make for a healthy anything. And it, it actually creates the very tribalism that J. Scott Campbell says he's so against. But I guess not so against it, he won't enact it when he has to. But it's sad. It's sad to see someone who, who is so talented and who has become so well-known and popular and even to some degree revered, you know, just totally bend the knee to SJWs, to the activists, because there is no pleasing those people. There never will be because they're not about being pleased. The minute they've destroyed something that they, they claim is, is the problem, they're not satisfied with that. They then move on to the next thing, like a parasite. And, you know, as long as that's allowed to stand, as long as nobody, you know, takes a stand against that by supporting things that, you know, don't operate on such, such a level, you know, by not supporting people who don't operate by throwing under the bus the very people they need to to make things work, 
then this will always be the case. We're, we're going to continue down this road we've been on for years now. It's not going to change. It doesn't change until we change, until we stop and say, you know what, enough. You know, I, I've done it. You know, I, I, I'm not buying anything Marvel, anything DC, anything any major publisher. You know, I'm getting a few independent books right now, and I'm supporting certain crowdfunding books from people who have shown that they can get their work out on time. And that's about it. But that's what I'm doing. I, I can't support the mainstream anymore. You know, I, I love the stuff. You know, I grew up with this stuff. I've, been, I've read it since the late 80s. You know, I, it, it's, it's, it's almost a part of my DNA. But I, it, this can't, you know, this type of thing where the people you're supporting won't support you when push comes to shove, I can't support that. I can't stand by and, and, and give my money and my, you know, enthusiasm to those who would throw me under the bus the minute I became inconvenient to them. And I don't think anybody should. So I would say take Young Ripper's words to heart and start supporting alternative people. Not just anybody because they're alternative, because that's what he says. Don't just support them because they're an alternative. Support people who are alternative and can produce the work. You know, and can do good stuff. He goes, but there are plenty of people out there who can do that. He goes, and they don't get the kind of support a J. Scott Campbell does. Give them that support instead of J. Scott Campbell. Let let the let them make make themselves success because they care about giving the consumer what they want, about treating customers like like you know they matter and what and and that that, that their 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 thoughts and their feelings on on free expression. Are important. Let let them know, because that's that's the way forward on this. That's that's what I see as the way forward. You know, we, we we have to we have to let go of of our nostalgia for for what we've loved for a long time, and and it's hard. Oh God, it's so hard, but it's it's what we have to do. And you know, maybe is there a chance that maybe they'll they'll, they'll correct the course in the mainstream if enough of us do it? Maybe. I don't. I wouldn't bank on that, but. Whether they will or not, it doesn't matter. We need to, we need to be smarter than this. We need to stop doing these things and shooting ourselves in the foot by supporting people that basically are not worth our support. That's that's what we need to do. That's that's the answer. And I just hope more of us start realizing it, so that uh, situations like this. Don't keep happening again and again and again. And, you know, that's that's pretty much it. So um, I guess it'll about do it. I guess I ain't got much more to say, you know, other than, uh, you know, to say thank you for joining me today. Um, but before I go, uh, again, because it matters to me. And it's important to me that that I show you the uh, the kind of uh, thing I'm talking about. This this support. I mean, we here at Sequential Treasures, we all appreciate your support very much. We uh, we find it important to let you know how important how much you actually do matter to us because uh, we couldn't do this stuff without you. You know, you guys, you guys are what you're the grease and the gas that makes all this work. It doesn't work without you. And so uh, I'm going to now take the moment out to do the quick little plug here and say, you know, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and join me uh, so you can join me for all future installments of sequential thinking, the art of unboxing and any other cool stuff I may think up uh, to do with this uh, this channel. Again, like I said, it's all up to you. I'd, I'd like to do more things on the channel, but uh, until I have a bigger subscriber count, it's going to be kind of hard. So if you can share out the videos, share out the link to the to the channel, I'd appreciate that very much. Also, uh, be sure to check out our other um, other places that you can find us, such as um, our MeWe group. 
right here. You can find it very easily. It's got the classic Cable versus Wolverine image by Dan Lawless. And you can see here, this is where we have all our stuff. Where I post all kinds of stuff about the artists I'm working with, when art's available, all kinds of cool, fun things. You know, talks talking about comic art. So make sure to head over here, and uh, if you're on MeWe, uh, give us a give us a like and join us here over there. And then, of course, the uh, the most important one of all of all our uh, endeavors is uh, this one right here. The art gallery, which is where uh, you'll find the work from our artists at. Uh, both of these are linked below in the uh, description section, so you can just head on straight over. But you can come on, come on over to the art gallery, purchase some sweet, sweet comic art. You see lots of great stuff here. We got sketch covers, pages, pinups, covers, the whole shebang. Everything you could ever want. And, uh, you know, I, I, I give, I think, probably some of the best service uh, you'll see. You know, I'm quick to get stuff out. I'm quick to reply to emails. Um, you know, usually throw in extras to people when I ship out, you know, little little extras like autographed comics, autographed prints, that kind of thing. Just a, just our way of saying thank you for your support and thank you for, for giving us uh, your, uh, your dollars. Because, uh, again, like I said, all this uh, would go away without you guys. You guys are what matter. You know, this is something that a lot of people seem to forget in the uh, mainstream comic industry is that you guys are what's what's important but uh we are sequential treasures we've never forgotten that and we never will so you know head on over to those places and uh give us a little support we'd appreciate it i uh, want to thank you again for joining me um i hope this uh, gave you some entertainment value sorry i had to boomer it up there a bit you know looks like uh the new way of doing things isn't going to be the new way of doing things in the future so i guess i'll have to stick with the tried and true but uh, again, I thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting and thought provoking. I hope it gave you some uh, some ideas on uh, how to make things better for uh, for our our community, the comic community, and and to uh, maybe ideas on how to move forward again without uh, without us getting thrown under the bus all the time by the very people we're we're supporting. And uh, you know, until next time. I'll be back soon. Uh, I got I got uh, notification from artist Mike Harris. I should be having his uh, art shipment on Tuesday, which would mean there'll be a new art of unboxing this Wednesday. So, fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully we get that done. And uh, you know, and uh, have that for you. And I'm also working on another sequential thinking piece right now too, as well. So, you know, I just had to throw this one out real quick because, uh, you know, it's starting to get a little stale. It's been a week since uh, the J. Scott Campbell thing, and I don't want to wait on it too long and be too far behind uh, everybody else. But, um, you know, there you go. And, uh, un you know, so until next time, take care. <laughs>